Order, pursuant to paragraph 7 of Standing Order 92, I fix the times for the conclusion of consideration of the heads of expenditure and the estimates of expenditure for FY 2019-2020 in the Committee of Supply. In fixing these times, I have taken into account the reduction of question time to 30 minutes on the days allotted for the COS debates and extension of sitting times of the Committee of Supply for each of the allotted days. Additionally, Members are notified that the sittings on the allotted days of 1st to 8 March will commence at 11 a.m. The guillotine times are fixed and have been notified to honourable members. Order. The clerk will now proceed to read the order of the day. Item 1. Consumption of debate on the budget statement. The question is that Parliament approves the financial policy of the government for the financial year 1st April 2019 the 1st March 2020. Dr. Lim Vikia. Mr. Speaker, sir, I stand in support for the Budget 2019. I support the broad principles highlighted by Finance Minister, which Budget 2019 was formulated upon. I would like to discuss briefly on three topics. First, universal support versus cohort-based support schemes like Pioneer Generation and Medica Generation. Second, investing in our future. Third, why we should have a climate change bill. First, like many of us in this house, my parents belong to the Pioneer Generation. Like many in this house, I have many relatives, friends who belong to the Medica Generation as well. Both Generation, Medica Generation as well as Pioneer Generation lives through turbulence time of our nation building. They have worked hard, they have built this nation so that subsequent generations that follows will have a much better future. I'm born in 1968, so I belong to the next cohort, you know, which I think Mr. Murali termed as Majula generation. But we, are, we were told the coin as the post-independence generation when we first uh, came into this, this chamber, this house. And uh, the next cohort is those who are born in 1960 to those who are 1969. That includes Mr. Speaker yourself too. And I would like to call this cohort the independence generation because we are born plus minus five years from independence rather than, than that. And I do agree with uh, Prof. Daniel Goh that the Mendaka generation and Pioneer generation has taught us independence. And that's the reason why I think independence is a better name than Majula generation. We are all here because of them. And we want our pioneer generations, medical generation seniors, to enjoy their golden years and age graciously, peacefully. And I support the pioneer generation package as well as the medical generation package. Some in this house has asked whether cohort-based schemes like pioneer generation package and medical generation package can be replaced by a more permanent universal system or healthcare system. A permanent system that automatically gives subsidy based on a certain age, like our current transport concession for seniors. All senior age 60 and above can apply for a senior citizen's concession card. In principle, if resources are available for the long haul, I think we can support a universal system that automatically distributes the benefits of the package to all that's above 60 years old. But it is, is, is this practical or realistic for the government or for this House to propose and implement such a health scheme? Is it sustainable given our ageing population, growing numbers uh, in, th in this age group as well as over the next few years? Cohort-based schemes like Pioneer Generation Package and Mendeka Generation Package are targeted at the needs of this cohort. <coughs> as explained during the launch of the Pioneer Generation Package, this cohort has contributed to our nation building during difficult and challenging times. Many did not have proper education, good job opportunities, they worked hard to support their families and did not have sufficient savings for retirement and health care because CPF, MediSafe scheme, were not implemented then. The package was tailored to their needs and targeted at the concerns that they have. 
A universal scheme will be more blunt, broad-based, less targeted. We are not starting from zero. You know, as it is from today, we do have a universal health care system. You know, one may go to the MOH website to just inquire about the subsidy they can enjoy. Just key in if your age is 60 years old, which is, means that your birth date is 1959, and, and, and put that as Singaporean. The website will show 15 health care schemes that you get subsidies for. And these 15 schemes are, I will just list them down, MediShield Life, CareShield Life, MediSafe, CHAS, Elder, Elder Shield, MediFund, subsidies for services and drugs at public health care institutions, Enhanced Screen for Life, Interim Disability Assistance Scheme for Elderly, Foreign Domestic work, work, uh, Workers Levy Concession for Persons with Disability, Seniors Mobility and Enabling Fund, Caregivers Training Grant, Elder Fund, Foreign Domestic Work Grant, and subsidies for government-funded inter intermediate and long-term care services. These are the 15 schemes there. Primary health care in polyclinics are already heavily subsidized and they are not means, means tested. Any Singaporeans can enjoy subsidy there. Likewise, subsidized health care at public hospitals are also affordable to all Singaporeans. For those who are not able to afford, for some reasons itself, medical social workers are there to, to assist and there's always MediFund. So no Singaporeans will be, derived, will be deprived of the medical care they need. There are also some who ask whether the next generation which follows, you know, who are those who are in currently they are 50 to 59 years old, will get similar package when we reach 60 years old, which is in 10 years' time. I and many of us in this house belong to this generation, the independent generation. Our generation, in fact, have already received a much bigger and better package than the previous two generations. Our generation were, were given better education, better job opportunities, better housing, better health care, better transport, and most important, a better Singapore by the pioneer generation and medical generation. Like the previous two generations, our generations have worked hard and contributed. We grew up in a more stable and prosperous Singapore. We were able to save for our retirement, our medical needs, compared to the pre two preceding generations. Our needs are different. There are important differences between a cohort-based scheme and a permanent scheme. That is sustainability. A cohort-based scheme is financed by the current government and does not burden our future generation. A permanent scheme will need additional recurrent funding which future government may not be able to cope. In another five to ten years, the new future government, if they are prudent and capable, we may see an independence package that will cater to our needs at the point in time. Next, investing for our future. Human resource is the only resource and the most important resource Singapore has. Development of human resource through education and upskilling is key. Currently, formal education, primary school and secondary school education are heavily subsidized. Hence, parents only pay monthly standard, standard miscellaneous fees of $6.50 for primary school and for secondary school $5 monthly fees. In contrast, a four-hour MOE kindergarten program will set the, the parents back by $160 per month. The difference in fees are quite stark. Preschool education currently now is not compulsory. Hence, it doesn't have the, have the support given. All educators know the importance of early childhood education as it sets the foundation for the child. I hope the government or future government will make preschool and early childhood education compulsory and provide more resources so that school fees can be free, just like the primary school. Upskilling and upgrading for all Singaporeans for the future is important. Will the government consider putting in more resources now into skill future and top up the accounts of Singaporeans who have utilized or exhausted their credits? After education and upskilling, it is important that the wages have to be increased to improve their lives. Mr. Speaker, I would like to ask, you know, what is the difference in goals between a progressive wage system or minimum wage system or living wage system versus workfare income supplement? Neither encourage a one to be unemployed. Isn't the outcome the same? There are many countries with minimum wage, but very few countries with WIS. Why is this so? How comprehensive is the WIS? Are there low wage workers that did not benefit from WIS? My last topic will be on climate change. Mr. Speaker, sir, much has been said about our commitment to climate change. We have been educating our population on the greenhouse effect, carrying out various campaigns, engaging the transport operators, businesses, corporations, as well as factories to get their buy-in. 
but we do not have a climate change bill. In UK, before the Climate Change Act was, became law, UK was struggling to meet its very unambitious emission targets. The Act sets a scientifically informed long-term target of 80% cut in emission by 2050, which is legally binding. In other words, it aimed to increase its ambition and be, to ensure this ambition was met. There are many countries, such as Sweden, where the Climate Change Act contains provisions on the government climate change policy that works will be aimed at, at and how it should be conducted. Norway, where the Climate Change Act offers the framework to promote and implement Norway's climate change targets as part of a transition to a low-carbon society in Norway by 2050. In Asia, closer to home, Japan Climate Change Adaptation Act, Act aims to enhance aim at enhancing adaptation efforts in Japan. It enshrines in this law in the 2015 National Adaptation Plan to set up obligations. Even closer to home, Malaysia has announced in December last year they are drafting a Climate Change Act, which will contain, which will contain adaptation mitigation plans to climate change. It will develop a list of comprehensive uh, risk analysis simulating, uh, simulating, com uh, simulating scenarios in the, face of the race, in, in the face of a rise in global temperature of 2% Celsius. Meanwhile, Scotland, to acknowledge that the, warm, the, the warning of a rising global temperature, and last year, they have sought further to enhance it further. In fact, in Scotland, the ministers are legally, are legally required to seek experts' advice on the earliest achievable date for a net zero target, for at least for every five years. But what about Singapore? Why don't we have a Climate Change Act? To show and to enshrine our own commitment to mitigate the change, I will propose that our government should consider to enact a similar act. Can the government currently now show what percentage of our current energy use can be harnessed from renewable energy sources? Will the government consider giving incentives even to private property owners who install solar panels like many other countries do? And also, what percentage of recyclable waste was collected from recycling beans actually get recycled. I noticed from a, from a documentary recently that uh, it was a dismal 50%, which means the other 50% was disposed of as waste. How can, this, how can we improve this percentage? Will NEA do more public education on this, teach residents how to separate different recyclable waste rather than to treat recycling bins as dustbins? Perhaps we have to review the current design of recycling bins at HDB Estate, which is just one large opening, which, bears, which looks like almost like a normal trash, trash bin. You know, why not have them design separate small openings for different types of recyclable, like the ones along Orchard Road? And last of all, what is our plan to use hydric, uh, hybrid electric cars? You know, I would like to encourage more drivers to use electric cars, but unfortunately there are simply no charging points in, around. Will the government take the lead to install more charging points around in different parts of the Singapore? Will BCA, considering hard code this requirement in all buildings, including new HDB estate. Mr. Speaker, sir, young Singaporeans are getting more environmentally conscious as it concerns their future. You know, so I hope the government can develop more concrete measures and create a culture of environmentally conscious in our country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.